of Faith in Leesburg, Florida. How are you? Good. How are you? Fine. Pretty good. Thanks what do you got calling. for us? Uh, yeah, I was wondering, uh, I, I'm a theist, and uh, I wondered if you uh, believe that, uh, that Jesus actually existed. So I don't know, um, is my answer. Uh, I don't have a big problem with the idea that there may be some real person at the core of this. Um, there's been a lot of um, scholarly debate on the subject in recent years. I have a, a friend, Richard Carrier, who's going to be releasing a book um, that uses a Bayesian analysis of history to try and give us a better answer, try and calculate the probability that he actually existed. M I'm far less concerned with that um, because even if he did exist and this was real, we still then have to say, okay, how accurate is the record uh, of his supposed words and deeds? And then we have the question of, well, was he actually a god? You know, is, is he, are these these things that he said, even if we have them accurately, are they then true? So it's it's layers upon layers. And the only reason, you know, for example, if you look back at like uh, Socrates and Plato, does it matter if they existed? Because their words stand and fall on their own merit. And that should be true for anybody and anything. And the only reason that this is different is because if he didn't exist, then the claims that of course, he was God. Fall away right right off the bat. So that's that's the only reason why it's really important whether or not he actually existed. Yeah. Well, now also, you know, um, he uh, was crucified and and rose from the dead, and hundreds of people saw him after he raised from the dead. How do you prove uh, that? Yes, that's it, a problem because the source. Again, we get back to his sourcing your historical materials, right? You know, right. Uh, what you have a particular. The passage in a holy book that uh, makes claims about what eyewitnesses saw, what eyewitnesses didn't see, but what sort of verification can you know can we apply to any of that? It doesn't seem like there's much. The, the analogy that I've used before on this is there are living, breathing people right now that you can go talk to who will tell you about their alien abduction story. I mean, this is happening now and has been happening for years. People are coming forward saying, this happened to me. And you can actually talk to them and interview them. Um, I don't believe that they've actually been abducted by aliens. Most people don't. And yet, if you take that story and move it back 2,000 years to where now we can no longer talk to these people at all, and all we have is anonymous hearsay accounts, how does that make the story more believable? Uh, to me, it makes it even less believable. So if I don't have a good reason to think that people that I've actually could meet and talk to have been abducted by aliens, then I certainly don't have a good reason to believe an anonymous account of a bunch of unnamed people that we can't talk to claiming to have seen somebody rise from the dead. And, and it is an extraordinary claim, too. I mean, we're talking about the basic question is, what is more reasonable to believe given the evidence we have? That uh, at this point in history, uh, one human body did something that no human body had ever done before or has ever done since, or that, you know, that these are uh, stories about a possibly, um, an, an, a, a possible actual historical figure, but that were then later on mythologized, fictionalized, mythicized, uh, which is a thing that happened back then. We do know from reading other historical texts, I've read a lot of histories, for example, um, just ancient Roman histories uh, written at the time, translations from the ancient texts, where the writers then were talking about popular beliefs concerning Roman emperors or Roman generals. The soldiers would actually believe in omens. You know, if an eagle flew over the camp or something like that, then they, they sincerely believed that this was the gods favoring their general and that the, 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 the battle that day would go their way. Things, so we know that people thought this way back then. They had these magical, mystical beliefs. It's not surprising that so, such stories, if Jesus was a figure who did some of the things that he has claimed to have done, that the people who believed in him and supported him would have just come up with such beliefs and tales themselves. That's not unusual. And mm -hmm. it seems a much more plausible explanation than, no, a dead body actually came back to life. Yeah. So uh, I, I see what you're saying. I, I don't agree. I, I, I believe that, it's, that he really did, uh, was crucified and did raise from, from the dead. And, but I wanted and, to point out, today was... Today was um, Epiphany, and the first reading was from Isaiah, which talked about uh, the rulers of the earth will bring uh, gold and uh, frankincense. That was written 750 years before Christ's birth. 
uh, Are you talking about, about the, the Messiah. Uh, yeah, well, all I'm saying is, well, actually, you know, it, actually, it was written 750 years before Christ's birth. Just so, a second, Faith, so, Faith, hang on just a second. Actually, um, the Jews don't agree with you that that was written about the Messiah or that it was fulfilled. Um, so, I, you know, you, you say you, you disagree and that you believe he actually, you know, was crucified and died and rose again. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering why you actually believe it, because the why is the important part. It's, it's probably more important than what you actually believe. Okay, do you believe that uh, the Holocaust really existed? Yes. Okay, there are people that will, will uh, we come from Chicago, and there's a professor at Northwestern University in Chicago who uh, wrote about how the Holocaust never happened. Yes. That they're, was just all made up. There are, there are Holocaust deniers. Unfortunately for them, we have a really good record, including survivors. Um, that rebut them. Yes, and you have all the survivors uh, that the, you can the talk to. Who, wait, 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 wait. You have the followers of Christ and their successors. No, and you on don't. For, you have the. Uh, you do realize the Gospels are anonymous, right? And that we can't go talk to any of those people, right? It, it, who cares who, it, who wrote them? I, I mean, I, I'm. I would agree. I'm, it, the point is that those exist, and the apostles uh, of Christ um, had successors that continued on and wrote. And, and it, you know, the uh, history—it's been going on for two thousand years now. Well, well, that's not evidence. That's anecdote. Yeah. That is, the, the, you're basically saying that because this claim has been tenacious and lots of people have believed it that it's believable, and that's simply false. Well, again, and it comes back to the quality of evidence. Remember what I mentioned before. You know, uh, you know uh, Holocaust deniers are going against a vast body of very easy to confirm evidence. And Even by the way, the, the Holocaust yeah. um, natural event, yeah. no appeals to the supernatural. It's very, very different from yeah. the idea that there was this person who lived and performed miracles that violate yeah. the natural yeah. order and then rose from the dead. Yeah. Then not all claims are the same. Some yeah. claims are extraordinary and require extraordinary evidence. Okay. And by the way, uh, if it turns out that there wasn't a Holocaust, that we have, have been duped by something, uh, so what? My eternal life is not in any way dependent about whether or not I'm correct about the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. See, it, come, it comes down to this. Let me let me give you. Let me try to put some of this in context, so maybe that you'll sort of understand where we're coming from on it. You know, you get a lot. You get farther back in time, and so it becomes a bit more difficult to come up with things to confirm the historicity of something, right? The actual, the, the accuracy of an account of something. You know, the mm -hmm. farther you go back in time, it is, it is more and more difficult to find reliable accounts. That's just the nature of that, right? Oh, That's, sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm researching a documentary about something that happened 130 years ago in Austin. Very difficult to find sources. You know, the farther you go back, if I were to go back three or 400 years to some other, I would have a whole lot of work to do to find reliable sources. You're mm -hmm. going back 2,000 years, again, much more difficult to find these reliable sources. Something that happened less than a century ago when you have photographs and film footage and, act again, actual survivors who are interviewed. Uh, okay, that's a very strong body of good evidence for something that is not an extraordinary claim. I mean, for example, well, the Holocaust was extraordinary in terms of the degree of human cruelty that was going on, right. but it's not extraordinary in that no one is claiming any kind of supernatural or divine agency is involved in any of this. Whereas if you're talking about, uh, you know, again, a human being rising from the dead and becoming a sort of God-man or having always been a God-man and fulfilling some kind of divine plan, you now have several millennia where we're actually separated from the supposed event, plus a real dearth of any historical document that isn't like directly from the holy book of the religion that is all about worshiping this holy man, you have a, an inability to find, you know, uh, extra biblical documents that confirm any of these events. Um, you know, you have uh, contradictions within the the holy book themselves. Was there an earthquake? Yes, no. How many people turned up at the tomb? You know, two, three, four, five, seven, twenty. Uh, the Gospels themselves are very inconsistent on how they talk about the resurrection, how they describe the events. So again, just to get to the facts of things, it's a whole heck of a lot more difficult. So, you know, you can't just look at something that happened 50, 60, 70 years ago and say this is on an equal footing of something that supposedly happened not only 2,000 years ago, but also had magic supposedly involved. And, and you see, I, there's gonna, a degree of things, and it's not, it's a false equivalence to say. And, and I'm going to let you respond in just a second. I just wanted one little thing that kind of dovetails onto what Martin was talking about. 
If we have a set standard of evidence for which that we use to determine whether or not a historical claim um, probably occurred or actually occurred, if we lower our standards of evidence to the point that the claims about Jesus are accepted, then we have no reason, no good reason, to reject the other claims of other miracle saviors or other religions. We just have to kind of take it all in. I mean, the Muslims would tell you that they have the original copy of their book and that they have a much better uh, annotated history from the beginning of their religion until now um, than Christianity does. And so if we've lowered our standards of evidence so far that uh, Jesus gets in and gets a pass on all the miracle stuff, then we'd be stuck believing everything and we'd be believing contradictory things. Hmm. You know, the, the ancient Egyptians with all of their uh, frescoes and their reliefs on their tomb walls, those are original documents, technically. But because they talk about, you know, the Book of the Dead and their pantheon and all that, should we consider them credible just on, that, on those grounds? No. I mean, you really, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Yeah. And so When I called last time, I was asking about, uh, uh, about the beginning of the universe. And they were talking about how it was a, a whole bunch of matter squeezed together and then it just exploded and... That's how we've got our universe and our planets. Well, um, and what I'm saying is, uh, matter does point. not; it, we ha it, it remains stable. So no, that means no. that something, some force, had to uh, bring that that uh, ball, little ball of matter into existence in the first place. How did, how did you determine that? I mean, first of all, first of all, your your explanation. Uh, I, I don't want to pick it apart too much, and I'm not a physicist, and this is not a show about. Well, I mean, that's what you guys told the guy that was that was a month ago who was a, co a host said that that the universe started with an extremely condensed a ball of matter that exploded. We call that the Big Bang, and well, we, the universe mm -hmm. is still exploding. So we don't we don't know the nature of all that. We can't look back beyond the Planck time, which is a slight fraction. Uh, the smallest fraction of a second that we can we can address after the event. What we do know is that it happened, or at least something happened, and the evidence for the Big Bang model seems strong. It could be that the Big Bang model is actually an error. Um, but you, science, stops at that point and says, you know what, right now we can't go any further than this. We have no mechanism to see behind, and so it's unknown. And yet you... Um, are asserting that there must have been something to cause this, and apparently, I, although I didn't let you actually get that far, you've concluded that the best explanation for this is God. And I don't know how anybody could say that God is the best explanation when it has no explanatory power. We explain things in terms of other things that we understand, and so trying to solve the biggest mystery in the universe by appealing to a bigger mystery um, saying God did it is indistinguishable from saying it was magic. And until you can come up with a way to, to demonstrate the probability of a God existing that is capable of doing this, then your answer, God created the universe, is fundamentally the same as universe creating pixies created the universe. They are two. Yeah, but he revealed himself to the Jewish people, and why does uh, okay? You, know, you, you say that throughout thousands of years. There. You say that, but what's your evidence that he revealed himself to anybody ever? And, in the Old Testament, there. Okay, what's your what? What reason do you have to think that the Old Testament is true, and why has he stopped revealing himself? Who said he stopped revealing himself? I see his. I see his work all the time. Well, no, you uh, see things that you attribute to God, but if God were actually still revealing himself, then we wouldn't be having these conversations about the origins of the universe or whether or not Jesus was a historical figure. It would be a settled issue if God was actually revealing himself. Um, I think that that there would be no reason for faith if... Uh, well, well, why, but, why but God was, but, but God was revealing himself. As you just said, God... Him, excuse me, if he was hitting himself over the... Us over the head with his uh, with his presence, there would be no need for faith. What what good is faith, and why is it important? What why, what's wrong with God just revealing Himself? He revealed Himself supposedly, according to you, to the Jews. Yeah, right. So why can't He reveal Himself to everybody else? Why why are we required to accept it on worse evidence than those people? 
Well, uh, Christ was God uh, in the flesh. But, well, that, okay. That, does, that didn't answer the question, Faith. My, my, my uncle Bernie was also God in the flesh. Yeah. See, I mean, I have, if, if, why, why is it okay for him to give clear, supposedly concrete evidence to one group of people thousands of years ago and not the rest of us? See, there's an inconsistency in your argument, Faith. You first mentioned that, well, God revealed himself to the Jews, a, a direct revelation. You believe that's happened, and you have given that as your justification for believing that the Old Testament is valid. But when we ask, well, why doesn't God do his business in the same way today, you say, oh, well, God can't do that because then there would be no reason for faith. So why did the rules change suddenly? Why, uh, why, was, uh, why, was, why was eliminating the possibility for faith back then not a problem, but it is now for God? I mean, why would God change his agenda? Hmm. I really don't know, but that's a well, very good okay, question. Well, think I, mean, think I really, I like that, but it's not, there's a, it's a Well, think of, just think about it. Something I hadn't thought about before. There's, okay. another, there's another aspect of this, um, and I'm not, I'm not trying to paint you in a corner. Do you believe in the devil? Oh, yeah. And, and the devil knows that God exists and, and, co and you know, lived in heaven for a while, was cast down and all that? Right. So the devil has absolute confirmation that there is a God and mm -hmm. has a good idea of exactly how powerful he is, and yet the devil was free to reject God. So as long as that's a possibility, then there can be no problem with God revealing himself to everybody because we would all still be re free to reject him as I would. Hmm. That's a good point. Thanks. Okay. Well, yeah, very good point. Yeah. Well, think about some of this stuff and... Yeah, and, 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 the, and the last question that they typed up, which I'm, I'm just going to hit real quick and we're going to move on to some other callers, was, was your question about miracles. And it pretty much follows the same route of everything else we've been talking about. Um, it, you know, we don't have any scientific confirmation of miracles, despite what some people claim. Um, you know, if, well, if, if these definition. things had been confirmed, yeah. um, they'd be front page news. They would be, um, you know, Nobel Prize winning things. The Templeton Foundation wouldn't have to keep sending money to people to try to prove that prayer works uh, because they'd be the first ones saying, ah, we've proved it, we've proved it. And yet, curiously, as our ability to investigate the world has increased, the uh, reported supposed confirmation of miracles has decreased. And I find that rather curious that the more we learn about the universe and how it works, the less God seems to be capable of or willing to do. And I, I go back to if a Damascus Road appearance and, and experience was good enough for Saul, then it should be good enough for all of us. There's no reason the rest of us should have to turn our brains off and rely on hearsay from other people and anonymous people in order to justify believing something. And we're miracles. I think, uh, it's interesting, though, that uh, what you have is uh, the Catholic Church for 2,000 years has maintained the, uh, you know, has passed on the information from Jesus and, uh, and actually from be before him. Have they? How accurate is it? Do we have some way of testing? That's the whole point. Um, we know that the church has existed and we know that they've portrayed these ideas, although they've changed their minds on some things that they evidently invented, like limbo or whatever. But um, what we don't know is how accurate is the information that they've passed on to, rel relative to what actually happened. And then there's still, as I pointed out at the very beginning, the secondary question of, is it actually true? The fact that a group of people have believed something fervently for a long time and passed it on is irrelevant because the truth of a claim isn't impacted in any way by the number of people who believe it or how strongly they believe it. It's rooted in actual evidence and there simply isn't enough to accept. I mean, th these are big claims. And, um, you know, given some of the claims that the, the, the church and other uh, Christian religious organizations have made that we know are false, the things about the age of the universe and stuff, um, I, I think the record is zero confirmed supernatural events on theirs and hundreds of disconfirmed claims by them. And so my bet at this point is that uh, they're probably wrong about more, and until I have evidence for what they're actually correct about, I don't have any good reason to believe them. Oh, well, yeah. when it comes what down to what you're saying, what you're saying sounds uh, sounds very good. I think that uh, that that is not uh, correct. There are lots of miracles that that uh, hold up, 
and uh, but I, I, that's uh, that's really a whole different thing. I think the miracles uh, that that Christ performed in the in the uh, recorded in the in the Bible are uh, are amazing things, turning water to wine. And well, first well, sure they're amazing, people. but did they happen? Again, when it comes down to miracle claims, I keep thinking about you know the Roman general and the eagle and and all of these things that people believed back then. I mean, yeah, yes, I we know, hear but, about know, turning water into wine. We hear about walking yeah, on water. We I know, hear about all I, I realize that. Yeah. You know, what, what, bother, what bothers me is I look at my watch, and I could tell you how that happened to come about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you would tell me, no, 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 a watch maker make it, made it. Oh. Now, you look at the uh, incredible laws of, that run this universe, uh, and they're very specific. If they were changed to just a touch, uh, we wouldn't be here. You know, you um, understand and, that they and, are... No, oh, wait, wait, I'm not finished. Okay. Uh, All right, fine. And, and how, how can you look at these magnificent laws and, uh, and, and say that there wasn't a lawgiver behind them? I mean, I, you, because you look at Because there's no watch, evidence that that's that, the way the universe you look works. At, you look at a watch. I'm, I'd just like to finish this one sentence. You look at a watch and you say a watchmaker made it. How come you can't look at the laws of the universe and say they came about by a lawgiver? Um, Faith, on the watchmaker analogy, uh -huh. okay, let's, let's follow this through. Yeah. You, you, walk in, you find a watch on the beach. Yeah. You say this must have been designed. Mm -hmm. well, how, how is it? How is it? Stand. Oh, oh, well, hang, hang, hold it. Hold hang it. On, hold it. Wait. Wait. Whoa. Hang whoa. On. Hang on. You didn't want us to interrupt you. It's my turn now. Okay. Oh, we'll get there. She's All got right. an orb. Well, okay. I, I just want to clarify what I'm saying. It's just like if you looked at Stonehenge, you know that that was. Yeah, we got it. Okay. okay. We okay. we understand. Uh, we understand. We've been doing this for okay. years. We understand what you mean. Okay. Okay. So, in order to determine I that it understood it for years too. So in, okay. in order to understand, in order to determine that you think it was designed, what are you comparing it to? See, we, we recognize and we recognize design by comparing it to things that are undesigned. And if you believe that God created everything, then you can't possibly walk along a beach, pick up a watch, and say this is designed because in your world, What's you're your walking on a universe of watches, on a beach of watches, and picking up one watch and saying, oh, this is clearly designed, when you think everything was designed. And the truth is, we don't recognize design by complexity. We recognize design because there is evidence for design and no evidence of something naturally occurring like that. And if we came across evidence that watches were naturally occurring, we'd be in a pickle. But we know that watches are designed because we already know the process by which watches were designed. If you walked onto another planet and were walking around and you found something, how could you tell whether or not it was designed if you have no knowledge of that civilization or if there was a civilization? And the answer is you would have to contrast it to something. Something designed is contrasted against something that's not designed. Mm -hmm. You have to have a frame of reference. So what are you comparing it to? I really am not following you. I, I, okay. I, I, in, your model, in your model, God designed everything, correct? He, he, he started out the universe with the laws uh, of the universe, yeah. So even the grain of sand God designed, right? Well, I mean, you know, it... it um, God didn't design grains of sand. I, I don't. I don't know where you're going with this. Well, I, it's a question. It doesn't matter where I'm going. Yeah. Did God design grains of sand? Well, yeah. Okay. So if you find a watch on a beach, you have two designed things sitting there. You haven't demonstrated any mechanism for how you determined the difference. The reason this the watchmaker analogy has had so much traction among apologists is because. People intuitively think that they recognize design. Oh, look, it's, uh, it's Mount Rushmore. Clearly that was designed. Oh, look, it's a watch. Clearly it was designed. What you don't seem to understand is that you know that those things are designed because you have mountains and mountains of evidence for the design. And if instead you point to human beings and say, oh, they're designed, you actually need some evidence that human beings are designed because all of the available evidence points to the conclusion that humans are naturally occurring. We have a mechanism for reproduction. We have a long history throughout from the beginning to now of how humans evolved. They don't, there, there's nothing there about design. 
And you have to, in order to say that the universe is designed, you need to have a frame of reference to say that anything is designed. Well, what in your mind would a non-God designed universe look like? Yeah, we got no universes to compare it to. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if our universe was not designed by God, what do you think it would look like? Describe it. How would it, how would it function? <laughs> you guys are really something. And I, I must Thanks. tell you, <clears throat> it's really not fair you have two against one here, you know. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's about the arguments, not the numbers. No, 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 right? I know. We, I we mean, also have really, science against fallacy. Yeah, <laughs> your two minds are, and I just want my one mind and you have your two, you know, you guys are, it's a two against one, which is not, really not fair. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I enjoy uh, listening to your shows and, uh, <clears throat> and it's, uh, it's very, you know, very thought-provoking. Well, thanks, okay. Faith. Why don't Thank you go you. find two friends, and I'll let you go three against one with me someday. <laughs> That's fair. That sounds, yeah, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, uh, take care. Happy New Year. Happy so New Year, take Faith. Care, Thank Faith. you. <laughs> yeah. What would a non gon designed universe look like? That's that's the thing, um, yes. you know. When I talked, it, it was probably uh, rather snarky of me to say that. Oh, we've been doing this for years. Well, uh, I mean, that's we, irrelevant. Yeah. Well, it's just that these these are these are extremely common arguments. That yes. Are here. And, and I, so it's, and these are these are not not just common arguments. Yeah. These are the basic common arguments. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, you know, Ray, Ray Comfort would use the mm -hmm. oh, a building has a builder, yeah, and a painter painting has a painter. Therefore, creation has a creator. Whoops! Mm -hmm. Stop. Why did you call it creation? Yeah. That's a cheat. Mm -hmm. Of course, a creation has a creator, but you haven't demonstrated that the, the universe, universe is, is a creation. creation. Yes. And the reason that you know that a building has a builder is because there's no evidence for buildings naturally occurring and tons of evidence for buildings being designed and built. And the same true for painting. Two if you found just splotches of paint uh -huh. on the ground, do you, or splotches of color, I guess, uh -huh. on the ground, do you get to call it a painting? No, Jackson Pollock would. I know, yeah. Sorry. Given, given Jackson Pollock as an example, what mm -hmm. do you get to call a painting? Oh, well, it looks like a human. Okay. Well, it's so clear. I mean, the Mona Lisa couldn't just accidentally happen. Well, I agree that it's mm -hmm. incredibly unlikely, but the reason we know is because we know how these things work. Yeah. We've investigated them. Simplicity We've constructed is them. Simplicity a greater evidence of design, actually, than complexity. Yes. But two, yeah, yeah, simplicity is the hallmark of yeah. design, not complexity, which yeah. is another thing they get back. But two basic, before we move on, two basic yeah. mistakes being made here. Don't uh, make the basic mistake of thinking uh, can we, the laws of the universe are descriptive, not proscriptive. Right. And secondly, don't confuse design with order. Yeah. That's the, that is the fundamental, that's the foundational error that Christian apologists make when they give us the argument that faith made. Yeah. Confusing and, and, design, which is, has a mind and an intent behind it, with order. Which is entailed by, that's the nature of, that's ontological, it's just the nature of existence itself, order. And when Martin talks about the laws of the universe being descriptive, um, one of the things that I, I would have asked Faith is, let's say there were, that the laws of the universe, or the actual the universal constants, or the way the universe worked, were slightly different, and mm -hmm. we couldn't possibly be here. How do you know that there wouldn't be some other thinking some. being sitting there going, wow, this is just preposterous that this universe could have happened entirely by accident, yeah. it's fit for me. Uh, Douglas Adams has my favorite take. Yeah. The puddle. Uh, on that with his, the puddle, uh, which is at our wiki.ironchariots.org. It is, yeah. So you can look at it there. Anyway, well, that was, uh, that was a long call, but a good one. Epic call, but, you know, fun. again, good points. You guys want these to call, we got them.